Hello folks, Todd Halleck here today, talking to you a little bit about estate planning. Uh, particularly, I wanna to talk today about what we call disclaimers. Now, when we uh, plan an estate, uh, we often wanna plan in the most flexibility possible because we don't know what the rules will be uh, or what the size of the estate will be when we get to that time of death. So disclaimers are actually a planning technique that we can use post-death to deal with consequences that were unanticipated or uh, situations that were unanticipated or an unwillingness by moms and dads to maybe plan for situations that were known. So what is a disclaimer? A disclaimer is actually a refusal by a person to receive a gift that they are otherwise entitled to receive under a person's will or trust or a beneficiary designation. Uh, why would a person ever want to disclaim a gift? You may be asking yourself, why wouldn't they want to receive it? Well, there's many reasons why that could be happening, but just a couple are uh, estate taxes. Um, right now, we have a $12.92 million per person estate tax exemption. That's based on a 2017 change in the law where the estate tax exemption was raised from $5 million per person to $10 million per person. And that amount was then indexed for inflation to where we grow where we've gotten to today. However, if that uh, law is not extended or made permanent by the end of December 2025, it will expire and we'll go back down to the pre-2017, uh, or excuse me, 2018 number, which was $5 million per person. And that number will also be indexed for inflation, but it may be more like six or $7 million per person. So what if son or daughter today has a five, six, $7 million estate, not really in concern of the 12 point, of going over the $12.92 million, uh, but, if the number goes down in 2026, we may have a problem, right? So mom and dad don't do anything differently in their estate plan and son or daughter is entitled to receive that amount. But at that time, they do have an estate tax issue. Well, son or daughter can refuse, disclaim that gift. And instead of going to son or daughter, it will go to the next beneficiary identified uh, in uh, mom and dad's estate plan and won't pass to son or daughter and then be subject to estate taxes at their level when they pass away. So estate tax might be a reason to do um, a disclaimer. Uh, another reason might be that at the time of mom and dad's passing, son or daughter beneficiary finds themselves in bankruptcy or in the middle of divorce proceedings or some other uh, creditor action where they are would be at risk of losing the inheritance if they received it they may in that case again do a disclaimer uh, to refuse the gift and then the gift will pass to the next beneficiary identified uh, in mom and dad's estate plan maybe that's uh, their children uh, maybe it's the other siblings who knows but it will go to whoever that next beneficiary is in the estate plan or on the beneficiary designation form it won't go to somebody that this person that's disclaiming the right uh, wants it to go to. So that's an important thing to understand about disclaimers is it just is going to act, uh, it's going to function as if you have died before the giver and therefore uh, it goes to the person who would inherit it if you did not survive uh, the person making the gift, not who you might want it to go to necessarily. One glaring exception of, of, of using a disclaimer in the context of asset protection would be if the beneficiary is on Medicaid or some other needs-based government assistance. Most of those programs will say that if you uh, 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 use a disclaimer in that circumstance, it will be treated as if you received the asset and then made a gift of the value of the asset and it could then disqualify you from receiving future benefits. So it can be a little bit tricky to know when you can and when you can't uh, use what we call a disclaimer, a qualified disclaimer. So it's important to receive good uh, uh, legal advice in, in making that decision. Uh, how does one make a, dis a disclaimer? Well, that's going to be a function of both state and federal law, and you're going to need to comply with both. Um, usually that's going to require a writing, 
meaning you do it in writing, and usually it's going to require that it be done within a certain amount of time. Federal law requires that it be done within nine months of the date of death. Another big requirement of being able to do a disclaimer is that prior to doing the disclaimer, even if you're within that nine month period of time, you don't accept any incidents of ownership. So for example, if you are the beneficiary on a retirement account and you want to disclaim it, it's very important that prior to um, making that disclaimer, you don't take any distributions from that retirement account or don't do anything that puts you in control. Once you do that, regardless of whether the time has expired, uh, you will be deemed to have uh, accepted the gift and can no longer disclaim the gift. So disclaimer is a big and important tool. We use them actually quite regularly. And so uh, if you have estate tax problems of your own, or if you are in a situation where asset protection uh, uh, or asset protection may be beneficial to you, you should talk to your legal advisors about the use of a qualified dis disclaimer. Uh, I hope you found that helpful. Until next time, take care.